Talus Magic Talk Show brought to you by Talus Master G C Food and Team Yet Dragon Talusum. Puriang Tenjon. Hi everyone, welcome back to the show. This is your G C Food again, and today we have a a uh, very interesting episode because. It's a very deep topic, and it's suggested by our fans, uh, and by email and comments on YouTube, and so on. So, I guess it's time to make a a new episode on this. It's uh, well, you see the title. So, um, they want me to talk about karma, reincarnation, basically like. Hey, um, we have a life here. What about the next life or the past life, and things we do here? Uh, what will it do, or af- like how will it affect us in the future life? Or is there anything from our past life that is affecting the life here right now? Well, first of all, I have to make it very clear that we don't talk about karma in Taoism. Because karma is a uh, like used by Buddhism, okay? That's the Buddhism thing. So we don't talk about whatever they are talking about. We don't have the same theory, but we have something very similar. So I would like to talk about how this actually like um, have a strong uh, tied with our Taoist uh, beliefs and our cultivation. Like when you are a Taoist, what you do, how that actually relates to the whatever you want to call like karma or whatever thing, right? So, okay. <clears throat> First of all, before I get into this topic, I need to introduce some terms, okay? Quickly, I have talked about them in our previous episode, but quickly just run through this. There's a word called pre-heaven. Um, pre-heaven is nothing about any heaven. Okay, when we say like there is a pre-heaven world, it means that that world exists in a dimension that is created before this one we're in right now. So you cannot see it, you cannot touch it, but it's there in another layer, another dimension uh, that is more ancient than ours. Okay, like it it born before ours. And in nature, it's like, um, <clears throat> well, it's kind of like uh, a building. So you have like floor one, floor two, floor three, right? So you finish one floor, you go to the next one. So <laughs> at least nature dimension is kind of like that. So every world has their own dimensions, and they're like zillions of them. So you can't really count, but um, like. I always wondered, like, look, science say that there are so many planets out there, right? Uh, I never seen any myself. I mean, like, I I never went out there and then look at it physically myself, right? So all we knew is from books, from videos, and so on, right? So when I was learning from my uppers, uh, from the other world, okay, um, <clears throat> I was asking them. What about the other worlds? Like, you know, are there like life on Mars? You know that kind of thing, right? And the the interesting thing is, um, well, part of it I figured that out myself, and part of it is uh, like I figured. I mean, I learned it from my uppers. Uh, I was told. Okay, so <clears throat> combined together, the answer is yeah, there are lives on other worlds or planets, whatever you want to call them. Okay. But they are not in the same dimension, so you can think about it this way: if you can, like a Superman, fly up to the sky and into the space, and then you can kind of see, you know, the whole solar system, whatever thing, right? So you can see everything there. Let's imagine that, right? Right now, you're in this dimension. You look at everything else; it looks like, wow, holy cow, no one's going to live in there. You know, it looks like. A bunch of mess, you know, like a chaos, uh, very chaotic climate, very like it just 
like an environment that no one wants to live in there, right? <laughs> You know, you look at the sun It's like, wow, so many uh, fire burning all day long Who would want to live there, right? No one, nothing can grow there But the thing is, that is like one side Or one uh, view <laughs> of the planet If you're in the dimension uh, that, that that planet is living Like its uh, living space is Then you will see the world right there and the world right there is like, you know, like how we are right here. It's like livable. So there are like many sides, many, many dimensions to the same place or location. And let's say, okay, let's let's use our imagination a bit. Um, you, know, you look at Mars and you're like, wow, Mars, look, <laughs> no one's going to live there. But it looks like a, a ball planet with so many rocks and mountains, right? But imagine you're in an other dimension where the actual living uh, world is. You go there and there is actually a, like the civilization right there. Okay, there are like actual beings living there, like actual things, beings, people, right? <laughs> it's not like... It's not like the planet that we see right now It's an, an other kind of world uh, You can't really imagine it Because you're not in that dimension Okay, It's like um, If you're a fish and you live in the Under the ocean Like very very deep In the dark area right? And all your life is like right there So that's all you know right? You cannot imagine about like What, what, what airplane is You cannot imagine about a tree You cannot imagine about a car, you know, they're like, these are out of your imagination. You don't have these in your little brain, right? <laughs> so it's just like that. We are like that deep sea creature and they are like, you know, in another layer, another level. So you can imagine it and they cannot imagine ours as well <laughs> because like we are in different worlds. Like how can we imagine uh, if let's say we live in the super dark area under the ocean, right? We cannot imagine like how can you have a life there? <laughs> it's crazy, right? But for us, it's hard to imagine because you're not those beings in that dimension. So, the bottom line is yes, there are other worlds, different uh, dimensions, and um, all kinds of weird stuff out there. Okay, like you know. Uh, if you want to talk about alien, yeah, sure, why not, right? But it's just not the way how we wanted it to be. <laughs> like, we wanted it to be like a physical contact, you know, like how people say, oh, there's like UFO, alien coming down, and you know, things like that. Um, well, so far, I have not seen any myself, but whatever, right? <laughs> like, real or not, until the day when news actually announced, like, oh my god, alien appeared. We made the first, well, if that actually happened on the news, then we'll talk about it. But now it's like no point, right? Everyone is just kind of guessing and, you know, small groups talking about it, but more like their own beliefs and stuff. I don't really care. Um, it doesn't affect the house market. <laughs> right? Okay, but... If you talk about the other kinds of living beings, like the other kinds of aliens, okay, in other dimensions, other worlds that exist in other dimension that we cannot see, yes, they are, okay, many of them, and uh, why I'm so certain about this is because I actually went those went to those worlds as well. Um, yeah, one of the topic that <laughs> my uh, fans want to talk about is. Astro, astro projection. So I believe like this is touching the that topic. Um, so some people believe that you have to go into a very deep meditation state, or like a certain very like quiet, you know, like you're still quiet and in a very subconscious kind of. You know, I don't know how you explain it. You know, like that kind of state, right? And then you you kind of wander to somewhere, and then wow, there's a, like a new world, and you can see it, right? So it's not like that. <laughs> um, in my experience, I so travel to many different worlds, um, and those worlds, like I have contact with as well, 
and they are not like you have to be, you know, going into like like a drug state. <laughs> you know, like people are like kind of you know into that uh, uh, turning in circles, shaking your body, rocking back and forth, and then you know you're kind of like out of your body experience. You don't need that. Okay, like real soul travel, you can do it just like right away. You, you you don't have to go into a sleep state, and you have full control of your body. If you are in the stage like, oh, I'm in like a, a like half asleep kind of feeling, and you know your body is kind of like rocking and such, and and then you see some stuff. Well, I would say like that. That's a very early stage. And it's a very like it's not a professional kind of soul traveling. It's a very early state of like you just banging around and you might be tricked as well. Like during that state, if you're like that, you might be tricked by illusions and things you see. Well, it could be true, it could be not true. It depends on the person. But most of the time, like if you're in that state, I will say like you're not even matured yet. <laughs> and so if you actually so travel to somewhere and you're seeing things you're not seeing the true form of things like you're not seeing the real side of those things because what you're seeing is just basically like you, your body is trying to to create the visuals that um correspond to whatever there is like it's kind of like a like a reference like it's trying to make a picture that reference to what you know and it's not actually what's there uh, so during that state it's very dangerous because a lot of people go into that kind of thing and they get so attached to it because they think that they're discovering something but it's actually a trap the real soul travel you can go right away and you're like 100% can control your body because you need your body <laughs> okay while you're soul traveling your body also need to move like a remote control right you move your body and your soul right there like your your soul body or i mean like the you right there can actually move um so you do need your body um okay so there are actually other worlds now how is that actually related to the <laughs> karma and reincarnation now that's a hard topic okay <laughs> i'll get to there okay so now you know there are other dimensions right there are other worlds that exist before us and so on okay good we talked about the spiritual worlds um before in the earlier episodes and so we talked about like they are not like here right they, these uh spiritual worlds like the pre-heaven worlds they are like another kind of matter okay here we uh we, we are like solid objects or solid beings and light bounce on us so we can be seen but in those worlds is like everything is glowing by itself it's like they are self illuminated okay so they don't have any external light source is everything is like self illuminate like a monitor you know thing just glows so there are other things that is like very weird about those worlds but i talked about those in the other episode so i don't want to waste time today on that okay now here is the thing how it relates to your next life or previous life think about it this way okay your previous life most people would would think that oh i like today maybe uh, here i'm like a chinese my previous life i was a german you know like that right and i was like in in the year of something like in the past when i hear that i know this this guy is being tricked because why? Because your life is not like that. Like our cycle of life very, very rarely will cycle in the same world. So what happened to those people who said, I, I had my past life memory and I was like a German soldier. And then suddenly, you know, they can talk about things in the past life and it kind of matches and it freaks people out. You know what happened? Now, these people are actually fallen into a trap what i call like it's kind of like a corn setup okay so what happened is um i got to make up an example to let you know how it goes okay <clears throat> so there there is and there are many other pre-heaven worlds right 
So there are some that are like high above us, and these worlds, most people would call them like those people are like gods. Okay, gods are the human beings. They are like higher level, higher than us. Okay, so just just keep that in mind first. Okay, these so-called gods, they. Have a very、um, common common thing with them. They like to connect to human beings here because we are like we are like the seafood inside the ocean. We are like crab, fish. You know, they come to hunt for food. Okay, so they want to connect to us, and then through us they will loot our soul energy. They will want our soul energy. It is hard for them to have more of that in their their world. And in the previous episode, like the one that I talk about spiritual agenda, secret agenda, I talked about why. Okay, you can listen to that episode. But the key point is these spiritual beings are like they're like gods. They're at, on on top of us. Okay, so they live longer than us. If they tagged onto, let's say, this god, okay, tagged onto a German soldier, and then went through the whole life of you know this German soldier, and then the German soldier died, the god found the next target. After like two hundred years ago or one hundred years ago, they found the next target. Ah,、uh, American. You know, in USA, so the god can actually inject all that memory,、uh, in or, or like information or memory, and then put it injected into this person, and this person then will think that I got my past life memory, but it's actually not their past life memory. It was like. It was like a, someone injected a video tape into you. You know, you just got that from that god that injected something into you, and they make you believe that it is what you were before. And then, as you fall into the trap, they give you more evidence. You know, because we are so into science. Science talk about proof, right? You need to like prove things. So they give you proofs. A little bit here, a little bit there. You know, you see. Ah, this what you knew was accurate. As you fall into that trap, you are doomed. The more you're into there, the more you like try to find out about the past. The more you're into the trap, and the more you believe, the more that thing is going to attach to you, and eventually it's going to suck you dry, and it's going to do you no good but just suck you dry. It's scary. That's. One of the secret agenda, and a lot of people don't realize that because, well, first of all, they are not trained in this; <laughs> they are not a professional, right? So they just they are just a victim, and then eventually it's like that God above is so powerful, it overrides their logic. Like they try to think, and then oh oh well, you know this proof that proof it must be real, and then they they fall into the belief. They cannot get out of it, so that's what happened with those people. Okay, and it it can get very like accurate because the that God actually followed the other other person before, and usually they tag those very big or important people. For example, your like this God might be tagging、uh, to like a female priestess in Egypt. When Egypt, like you know, ancient Egypt, or maybe the king, you know, back then, something like that, right? Like those big, 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 big ones. And then so this life, you know, the 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 that that God will find someone and tell them, you know what? In the past, you were a priestess right there. It's always something very big, because they always target those big ones. <laughs> so now you have this big story, and then eventually you'll fall into that, and you know, like that, and well, you're done. <laughs> you fall into the trap, right? You got scammed.、Um, most of the time, when I hear people say, you know,、uh, like their past life is some someone here in this world, 
99% is like, oh gosh, <laughs> and other victim, right? Most of the time it's like that. And it's very obvious. Um, so the past life stuff is real, but it's not like that. Usually your past life is in another world, another dimension. And it contains a lot of things that is like out of your imagination in this world. It's totally different. So it's very hard for someone to just say it because it's like you cannot make it up. You've never seen those things. It's like you are the, uh, you never know about what deep sea creatures are like. You cannot explain or like say any examples of how they are like because all you can reference to are things you have been seeing or your life uh, right here on the land, land surface, right? So if someone actually go down there and then they looked. Oh my God! The deep sea creature actually glows. They have like you know they they, they have uh, what, what 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 that fish call um, the lantern fish, right? Eh? Like wow, they they actually glow like a light bulb. You know, they you went there, you see it. Now you know. If no one told you and you never see it, you can never imagine, right? So your past life has a lot of things that is like very out of your imagination, very wild. Like you can never imagine those things exist, but they are there. So if someone actually went to those worlds and had experienced it, when they talk, immediately I know you have been seeing those things. In my past, I have a few, ex um, a few disciples that had experience like that. Uh, one of the disciples got kidnapped by those people from the past life that went to chase her down for revenge. And they even bullied her and almost killed her. So when I listened to her explaining what happened, and I, I like listened to her encounters and stories, I immediately know what that is. And I told her, is it like that? Do you see these things? Do you went there? Oh, she said it. And then she's like, oh my God, how come you know? <laughs> I talked to many people and they don't know. They, they say I'm crazy. And now you understand. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, I went there too. <laughs> right? So the past life stuff is is there. It's, they, it does exist. Okay? So now you know, Talism does talk about past life, but it's definitely, definitely not like what most people think that how it is like. Uh, it's in the other world. You know, you're like in the other dimension. It's, very different. Now, when you die from here, you have a, a future life. And that future life is like, depends on you, seriously. Like, what do you do this life? Um, what are you doing? Did you, did you prepare yourself? Or did you not prepare yourself? What are your relatives doing to you when you die? All these things will, will make a big change. I mean, like, if, okay, let's say, you are, you have no relative and you just died in the middle of nowhere, right? So you're like naturally just died, okay? When you just die, your soul body becomes the you that is active. And you're like, you know, like a baby here when you're born, everything is like blurry to the baby. When you first die, you're also in that state that is like very blurry. And it freaks you out because you're new to the world and you cannot really see things clearly, but you can hear a lot of sounds and uh, you have no control over your body. You kind of like just, it's like someone put you on a seat, tie you up, and you're now just watching the movie, you know? <laughs> it's kind of feel like that. So at that stage, a lot of the, the dead souls, they're not a ghost yet, okay? They're like a dead soul waiting to be a ghost. A lot of that actually don't really get to even become a ghost. They actually, like a lot of them will be enslaved or captured by those higher spiritual beings. And well, why they capture them? Because well, they need people. <laughs> right? So you become a prey. Uh, you're weak, so they capture you. Um, so there are like lots of those cases. 
more than people who actually made it to the next cycle. However, I have, I have had cases where like people died, and after like 20 years, they are still not really like captured by anything yet. Um, so what happened to those people? Well, eventually there are two main, oh no, three main ways that you can go. Okay, one is that you will uh, transition to become a complete ghost. That complete ghost is like you are going into another dimension that is like after this world dimension that we're in right now. Okay, so if you like, we call this dimension is dimension eight. That one is dimension nine. It's like one world, one layer in advance. Okay, and in that world, you will see other people right there as well. Uh, you don't start off like a baby, so you keep your memory, and you have a life there. Okay, I can just say that much. <laughs> um, it is not like an ancient world. Okay, not like what the TV show is like. Okay, it's not like an ancient world. It's another world. It's not ancient. Um, and you do have like society and civilization and things like that right there. Okay, but you have your memory right there. That. Dimension is very sorrow, like a lot of sadness, because people kept their memory. So there's like a lot of, lots of, you know, like gray and dark and not so happy kind of mood right there. You know, people are not very happy, and they always have the um, hope for someone above to save them. That's basically what that world is like. They want someone from the above because all their life has been like, you know, you heard about religions and you didn't forget about it, okay? So when you're there, you finally knew that, oh my God, there's like actually this world right here. It's not like I black out and then that's it. You know, like it's not like how science people say it. It's actually another world. Oh my God, what do I do? And then eventually a lot of them will like, really, now I want God to help me. In whatever religion they have been, uh, uh, like they have been more closer to, they will want to beg for that God to help them. And a lot of people are like super religious down there because they really know that they need the help. So, well, yeah, enjoy, keep waiting. <laughs> and what if you're like just you know you there and can you die? Yeah, you can die. Okay, you can die again. When you die again, it's like you get destroyed. So you get destroyed, then you cycle again to somewhere else, and then it keeps going. So it never ends. <laughs> it never. <laughs> yeah, it actually never ends. Okay. Um, there is an ending, but I'm not going to talk about that yet. Okay. Um, so that's w path number one. It's like going downward. Path number two is that if you are in, uh, like, if while you're alive and you are very angry, frustrated, like, you know, your heart is very grumpy, that kind of mode, right? You have like so much negatives in you. When you die, uh, you will try to reunite with your spiritual planetary body. But because of your negative, your spiritual planetary body will kind of have a crash with you and bounce you back out. So when it does that, it bounces you back to another dimension that is kind of more pre-heaven than here. Uh, it, well, this dimension, you will become not a ghost, but an other form of spiritual being. And we call that the Yam Yip One. The Yam Yip One is uh, like negative, obstructive, energy, soul energy being, or something like that. Okay? So the you... By then, that is like fully uh, conscious, like you know what you are doing, you know where you are, right? It's like you, you, you're alive, active. 
But the you with the personality is like, imagine right now you are kind of like sometimes happy, sometimes sad, you know, like that, right? The you right there is like the saddest, most negative, most angry mode of you all the time. So you lose all the positive side of you. Your personality become very, very negative, because all that that um, crash with your own spiritual planetary body made all the positive energy sucked into the spiritual planet, and the negative is what cannot go in. So that the you, <laughs> you become like a super angry mode you. And in that world, and you're like a ghost in that world, but you're actually feeling like 100% solid. In that world, um, well, there are like a lot of other similar people right there. So imagine a world of violence, a world of chaos. And naturally, that dimension, uh, like it's, it's kind of like... That dimension is actually a dimension that is born after those gods' world. Okay? So they're like more post-heaven than the gods' world. And in that world, there's a lot of creatures. Imagine like, you know, those sci science fiction movie. Imagine those like monster, very ugly ones, you know, like slimy, ugly, deadly looking, you know, huge whatever that kind of monster tons of those tons of those and one thing is uh how does people here get the idea of like those monsters in those movies well people get inspired right you get inspiration artists uh story writers and authors and people like that they always get inspired by things or even see things in the dream or something like that. It is because there are people from those worlds bringing down the stories, trying to like tell us, hey, there are things here, there are things here. No, they're telling us things. And eventually here we have people trying to recreate them uh, graphically and there goes them on the movies and shows. So, yeah, it might not be 100% accurate, but it is very close. <laughs> um, I have visited that, that world. It's pretty freaky. Um, <coughs> that world doesn't, doesn't have sunlight as well. It's also a world with things that glows itself, but it has like always has a very greenish sky. It's like a very, uh, you know, those northern light, like kind of like that around the sky area and uh, always like that uh, dark and eerie <laughs> um, yeah but it is very freaky a lot of violence and people there always like to like battle war fight each other kill each other destroy each other but they don't die <laughs> you just keep killing each other damaging each other you know like that they like venting and one more very important thing if you have an ancestor that hates you a lot and they went there you're in trouble <laughs> ever heard of uh curses from ancestors like your ancestor like for example your great grandfather or your grandfather died they went there right and they hate you so much well they have a lot of time there lots of other people with the same interest right so they will curse you Daily, like 24-7, you know, they have nothing to do. All they do is like beam magic at you. They are like non-stop attacking you spiritually. And oh, by the way, that world has a lot of magic, like lots of magic. Everyone is into magic. So it's not like a ceremony kind of magic. Like they're like naturally can do things to like beam their powers by distant and hurt people. So they do that to people here to vent. And until the day they vent enough to the point that they really feel like, ah, you know, it's like hopeless. They're done. I'm done with this. You know, like they're like that. Then they will die from that world and cycle back down. <laughs> but until then, they are not going to die. They like keep going and going and going and going. 
It's very scary. So yeah. <laughs> so we talk about the the two two path. Okay, last one. The best one you can go is you go upward and. Well, we said it. You went into your spiritual planetary body, your Yun Sun, and you re re reunite with it. So basically, you're like, um, you're like inside your own world, <laughs> okay? And in that world, you will have a pretty long life right there, enjoying that world. So this is what matters. If you're in that world, you become what we call. Um, it's kind of like you're in immortal, but this kind of immortal is like. Yeah, you don't die there, okay? But there's quite a long life, and eventually you also cycle to a next life later on. But it's very complex, so I got to just talk about this part first, okay? You in the Yun Sun, living in your own world, right? Now, if you have not been cultivating your Yun Sun, uh, like you have not done a good job while you're alive, your Yun Sun is like a wild, you know, scary world. You get into there and you're like, you're like, yeah, I'm in my world now. I'm immortal, but your world really sucks, and like you have nothing in there. It's not fun, and the whole place is like a torture for yourself. But if you have been doing well, then in there you will enjoy your life more because you have been building your Yun Sun right there. So you see, like the whole idea is during the time you're alive. Make use of it to cultivate for the journey. In Chinese, we have a term, "sao hang," Cantonese. It means to cultivate for the trip, <laughs> right? What trip? The trip after you're dead, right? The, after I die, I go into my own planet, and I want to have things right there, right? I want to have what I like right there. You know, I want things to be. At least, like it's not like a bare planet, and I'm like, okay, I'm here now. What do I do? <laughs> right. So you want to have a good planet to live in, and if you do well in this life, there you'll be happy. If you do not good here, you go there. It's like you created your own hell, and if you got attacked by uh, evils during your alive, those evils also invade your planet. So when you're dead and you're there, it's like, oh, uh oh, <laughs> like you went in back into the world, but all that evil things is like right there waiting for you, right? Not fun, ah. Huh? So, yeah, it could be heaven or hell, <laughs> right? <coughs> but that should be the best way for a person, a normal person. Now for Talus, we are different. Talus don't go. To the Yun Sun uh, only, we do have to reunite with the Yun Sun after we're dead, but we have another place to go. Okay, so it's kind of like you have a Talus Heaven, okay, somewhere else in a pre-heaven world that is more ancient than this one. Okay, so we have a, another place to go that that is like our destination. We go with the Yun Sun together. However, when we're in the new world. The Yun Sun, that planet is still going with us, and then we're like in that world, but the Yun Sun still stay in that dimension, like the new dimension. So, what happened is your life in the new world, in the well, quote quote, Talus Heaven, right? Your life there start off with a good or bad profile. It depends on what your Yun Sun is like. So imagine like some people are born and they have like all the good luck and you know like they don't need to work hard and they have a lot of good stuff you know when they're born because their Yun Sun is very wealthy, right? You have a lot of talents and things like that. Your Yun Sun is wealthy. So well, if you have not cultivate your Yun Sun or your Yun Sun is very bad, then you go there, you start a new life. Yeah, you're in the heaven, but you start a new life with a bad profile. So it's like your life is still very rough. Even you're in a new world. Yeah, you got to be in that world. It's a nice world, but you are still very rough. Okay, if you have cultivated the Yun Sun well, you go there, you have a good life. Now, so you see, it, it still matters, right? Now, this links to um, how our cultivation is related to the whole thing. Well, 
I wanted to just bring up a short point because we only have like five minutes. So um, we have altars, right? And we cultivate um, gods at the altar. Like, I will explain this in the next show. Okay, it's a long, long, long thing. But just kind of follow along. <laughs> we have altars. In the altar, we cultivate our own gods. Okay, our own gods at the altar. So when you die... These gods and guardians and such, they follow you to your yun san because you cultivated them. You are like the the owner, right? So they follow to your yun san. So that means what? When you go to the yun san for the transition part, you have people or God protecting you. So you have no chance of being like enslaved or captured or whatever. And secondly, when you're onto your next life, you have a very good start because these things at the Yun San, the gods and stuff, it's going to help you to repair or guard or fix all that problem in the Yun San. So that is why you want to cultivate the gods, your Yun San. Get, get like someone go there and help you to fix things up, to make it pretty. You know, imagine someone go to your garden and help you cut the tree and stuff like that, right? It's, it's going to be a much better better place than no one taking care of it right and also they prevent other spiritual hijackers from hijacking your yun san you see having an altar is like one of the most important thing and most importantly it's not just the altar you need to altar but you need to cultivate the god at the altar and that you need to cultivate the god with a statue uh at the altar and well, I'll talk about that in the next episode. Or maybe it's a super long topic. But if you cultivate the God, and when you die, the God follows you to a yun san. That is the whole, like, most important part. Because now you have this superpower right there guarding your yun san, helping you recover everything. And then you start off the next life much better than a normal person. So that's why we really emphasize on cultivating with the altar and it's definitely not just like eh, let's read some books you know uh, 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 you know read some books like a uh, king and you know, it's not just that okay that's like nothing <laughs> right? the real cultivation of a taoist is all about what we call sauhang which is to cultivate for the trip the trip to the next life right and well Linking at last, I want to link to the word karma. Finally, <laughs> I'm trying hard. Okay, well, most people will think like doing good things or bad things. Do good things at points. Do bad things minus point. Eventually, how many points you got? That's a good or bad life, right? Well, life is not that simple. <laughs> In Taoism, we don't talk about that kind of karma. It's like no way that simple. But we talk about like um, cultivating for the next trip. We talk about cultivating for tomorrow as well. Like, how do you want tomorrow to be? Well, make it better today, you know, like that. And we, it's always about the relationship between uh, the pre heaven and post heaven, two sides. So you here right now, like the world right here that we are in right now, when we are like awake. We call that the post heaven world, and your yun san is in the pre heaven world. Okay, so there's like two sides of you. We always talk about the relationship between the two, your yun san, how that world inside that planet works, how it operates, will create a pattern, and then that pattern will turn into energy form and goes into you when you sleep. When you wake up, the energy will. Uh, like kind of manifest on its own and become the life uh, pattern for you for the whole day. So it's like if the energy comes in, it's bad. The next day is like a bad day, you know, kind of like that. And it has like a pattern. So it's very complex. It's not like a math formula that you can uh, calculate and there's no way to calculate. But as long as you know the concept, you can try to make it better. So here I would like to say some tips for you guys that so you can also use these and avoid getting yourself a bad day tomorrow. Um, so the 
few hours before you sleep is the most critical, and a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, so I would say for the like three four hours before you sleep, avoid being in contact with anyone on the phone, especially those like who are um, negative. Angry, grumpy, or like to vent and like you know keep telling you about their heartbreaking story, that kind of thing, right? And also like avoid those arguments and fights and bad emotions, because if these negative energy goes in to Yun Sun, right? All that stuff is like it's kind of like your Yun Sun get the stuff in a reverse order, so they get the the first thing they get is the last thing of your day. So if they start off the whole package with a bad start, everything else is garbage. You know, it's like that. So you don't want to start the day so bad. Um, yeah. So <laughs> avoid that, right? Secondly, is uh, remember to eat well. That sounds like so common sense, but a lot of people are not doing it. Especially, do not go vegan. Unless you have like health issue and need to do that, uh, you need meat because they have the life essence, and these life essence are not in vegetables. Though they are like only in living beings because they have hearts, and you need those to replenish your life essence. So if you like, imagine this, okay? <laughs> um, just kind of a metaphor, right? Your spiritual planetary body is like a Planet, right? So imagine like you eat more animals, then more animals be born there. You eat more vegetables, you know, more trees and grass and whatever grows there, right? So imagine a planet that only has like grass and trees. It's not so good, and it also sucks up the whole planet dry very fast, right? But if you have animals, they will chew up the stuff and they will like. Poop and fertilize and give back to the planet. So, like animals are, like processor of of a world, right? They eat something, they go to somewhere else and poop, and then leave the poop there, fertilize the ground, and then something, something will grow there, right? It's like that. So, imagine this metaphor: if you only eat vegetables, right? Your spiritual planetary body is like. Non-stop growing a lot of greens, but the green sucks up your planet, and your planet's gonna die very soon. So it's not very good, right? You need the animals, <laughs> and animals are like they're living beings. They make the world happy. They make things move around, and so on. So if you don't want your life to be like a vegetable, <laughs> you need to eat the meat. Okay. Well, um, yeah. So this is the second tip: right? eat well, and, uh, sleep well. The uh, last. Last thing is, um, uh, you want to make sure that you choose your friends carefully, because some friends are very draining. They are like life suckers. <laughs> so if you're like very close to some friends who always sucks up your time, then their Yun Sun will of course also want to suck up your Yun Sun's resources, and it's kind of like a luck stealing thing, right? Um, so you don't want that to happen, right? So these things are like common sense, but You might not realize how important they are, so try applying them, and it's already a good start to get a better life. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. I'm kind of OT already, so we'll see you in the next episode, and of course we'll dig into the talus altar and all that, right? So we'll try to talk about that in the next episode, baby. So we'll see you next time. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and so on. Bye bye.